All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own VST plugin. We're using Flowstone, and you can buy that for just £99 from the DSP Robotics website. Or if you've got it included in FL Studio, you can use that version. The only limit of the FL version is that you can't export them as VST plugins when you're finished, but you can use them from inside FL Studio, just running Flowstone as a plugin. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you how to do it in the standalone version of Flowstone, which is pretty much identical to the version in FL Studio. So first off, we're going to go up to the top of the toolbox up here to the search bar. And what we're going to do first is sort our inputs and our outputs. So for the inputs, we want something to receive the MIDI messages. So we're going to search for MIDI and get the MIDI in. And this will bring up any MIDI devices that you've got. So you've got your PC keyboard and mine has brought up Key Studio, which is the MIDI keyboard that I've got. So I'm going to select Key Studio. And then next we're going to go for the output. So I'm going to put out, put, and I'm going to look for direct sound out, which is here. Okay, so next up we need to get something to turn it from MIDI into sound. So we're going to start putting the pieces in between these. So we're going to search for MIDI to, and we can get the very top one, which is MIDI to poly. If you're missing any of these um, components, it's probably because you need to install the audio or the DSP pack, which will give you some extra modules. And you can get that from the support section on DSP Robotics. I'll put the link to those packs in the description. So now all we need to do is match up the output and the input. These have all got different icons to help you see where they should be plugged into. So the M goes into the M. Um, we've got nothing to get like this icon into the blue. So what we're going to need to do is get a combiner. So we can just search for a combiner and that is going to change it from this gray icon to the blue one. So I'm going to plug this in here. This is going to be a stereo instrument, so that means we've got left and right channels. So I'm going to duplicate this with Ctrl C and Ctrl V and plug that in. Um, I'm going to drag these over to the right a bit so we've got a bit more space. And I'm going to search for OSC for oscillator. And um, we've got a few choices here. A few of these are ones that I've made, but the built in ones are the multi OSC, um, the sine, additive OSC. I'm going to go with the multi OSC here because this is going to give us the usual sort of shapes that you would get on something like Silent. So I'll just go with Sawtooth and we just need to plug the frequency into the frequency. And then we could just plug this straight into here. But the problem at the moment is we've got no envelope. So if you press a note, it might just hold it forever. Like there's not going to be anything to tell it when to stop. So what we need to search for is ADSR. So that's your attack, decay, sustain, and release. So this just tells the sound um, how to behave, like volume-wise. So whether you've got a fade in, how long it takes for the sound to stop at the end, and stuff like that. So all we need to do now is plug the output of this into the input here. And then these two can just be plugged. In fact, this bottom one is for the envelope. So that is for if you're using this to control something else, like a filter. So what we need to do is plug that out into both of these. So the sound that's coming out goes into both of these exactly the same. And then all I need to do now is choose my output device. And the one that I'm using is this speakers. And um, so if I press some keys on my keyboard, we should be able to hear it. So these notes are lasting a very long time and that is because the release is turned right up. So if I turn this right down, we would get nice short notes. And it's got a bit of a fade in at the start because of the attack here. And we've also got the decay and the sustain. So sustain is just going to make it last for as long as you've got the note held in. And if you use decay instead, then it will sort of fade out over time. Or you can use a mix of both. Um, so next, what we're going to do is add a detuner. 
So this is going to allow us to change the octave and fine tune the pitch. So for this, we just need to unplug the frequency from the OSC and plug it into the in here. And then we can plug this out back into the OSC. And we can just move these along a bit. So now if I play notes, I'm now able to change the pitch of them here. And we've got fine tune and semitone. Okay, so one other thing I just want to do quickly is duplicate both of these, Control C and V. And I'm going to plug the frequency in and this back into the A DSR. So these are both set up exactly the same. So now we've got two copies. So now we would be able to choose two different sounds if we wanted, or we can um, adjust the pitch on each of them. So what I'm going to do is put the fine all the way down on the top one and all the way up on the other one. So we can start getting some detuned saws. But one thing I want to do is turn up the amount of um, like the maximum values of the fine. So I'm going to go inside by double clicking on this module. And then this shows me all of the other controls inside it. And then underneath the fine um, label, we've got the knob here. If I click this P, we get into the settings and I can change the minimum value, which is what it would be when it's at its lowest point, to 0.20, uh, minus 0.20. And I want to set the maximum to the opposite of that, which is going to be 0.20. And then I'm going to go and do exactly the same on the other one. So now when I adjust these fine knobs, I've got a much wider range. We've also got a volume control over here on the ADSR. At the moment it says amount, but we could change that. If you get it too loud, then it's going to distort. So what you can do is go and change the maximum amount for that. So at the moment, the maximum is 1. We could change that to 0.5. And another way to fix that issue a little bit is to add a stereo clip just before the end. So we can just unplug these, plug them into the stereo clip, and then plug them back in to the output. And that just stops it going over 0 dB. So I'm not going to go into that, but it does help. And finally, one more thing that we can add is an effect like a reverb. So if we just search up in the top for reverb, we'll get the one that comes with Flowstone in the audio pack, I think it is. And we can drag that in. I'm going to put that before the stereo clip in the chain. So I'll move these along. I'm going to plug this in. And this comes with an on and off button, so by default it's off. And then I can turn it on. And I've got four controls here, so I can change the parameters. Okay. And then I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So at the top right here, we've got a zoom control. And I'm going to select everything apart from the very first and very last. These two, so I'll just drag them away a little bit. So we need to select everything in the middle. And then I'll zoom back in a bit so I can see. Um, if you go to the window at the top, you can drag like the navigator around here. And what I want is this little rounded rectangle icon. And that's going to make everything that we've made into a module. So it's uh, like inside this one box. And then we can press G to give us like the graphic panel here. And then if we use the lock icon, we can unlock all the parts and we can move them around so we can position them where we want. So I'll put the reverb and the envelope down the bottom and then I can spread these out. So because we've got um, two identical oscillators, what we're probably going to want to do to make sure we've got the right ones is just rename them quickly. So I can call that dtuner1, dtuner2, multiosc1 and multiosc2. 
So now if I click on them, I can see that's OSC2 and that's the 202. So I probably want to swap these around. All right, something like that should do. So that is our finished plugin there. We could add backgrounds and things, but I want to keep this nice and short. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I will do some more videos. We could also add uh, separate volume controls for each of these, and we could add other effects like echoes or filters or anything like that. So there we go. I hope that was helpful. If you wanted to export it as a VST now, you just need to click the VST button and you could go and save your plugin as an instrument and then you'd be able to share that with other people. So that's it. Thanks for watching.